Hi, I'm Dr. Emma Palmer. I'm a pharmacist that specializes in psychiatry. This is Principles of Pharmacology. We're talking about it a little bit in the context of psychopharmacology, but the overarching theme of how drugs work, how we define them, how we measure them is going to be discussed today. So things to take into consideration, the difference between pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics and those functions involved with both of those terms, common routes of administration, so how we give drugs and the pros and cons for each of those. This is Harry. He's helping me out a little bit today. We're going to talk about drug receptor interactions to predict physiologic response. So drugs can have different effects on different receptors within the body. But before we get into anything super deep, it's important for us to spend some time talking about definitions. So first off, starting very broadly, we want to talk about what a drug is, right? So a drug as defined by the FDA is an article intended for use in diagnosis, cure, mitigation, treatment, prevention of a disease. It can be in man, it can be in other animals, like Harry here, and it is intended to affect structure or and or function of the body in a biological system, man, animals, okay? So these products are exogenous, which means that they're produced or created outside of the body. We have endogenous chemicals that will create effects within the body as well. That's a different thing. All drugs share basic pharmacological principles that can influence their action. So we're going to describe these principles and define those key terms. So when we're talking about how drugs affect systems, that's really pharmacology. That's the science of drug actions in our biological systems. It explores molecular mechanisms by which drugs cause biological effects. It's the study of those chemical agents that can be natural, that can be synthetic, and how they affect those systems. This term, pharmacology, is derived from Greek. And the Greek term is pharmakon, which uh, actually means both remedy and poison, which makes sense because really for a lot of things that we put into our body, the dose determines the effect, right? The dose makes the poison for a lot of these types of things. Other additional important definitions include the effects, the site of action, and the mechanism of action. So when we say drug effects, what that means is the changes that can be observed in physiological processes and behavior from the activity of a drug. So the drug produces in an animal or human, a biological system, a change in process and behavior. When we're thinking of the site of action, that's where it does that. So in order for a drug to be effective, it has to be able to reach the place it's intended to go. So it has to get to the organ, the system, whatever it needs to do the thing that we want it to do, because it has to um, reach that space to do the thing. So when we're thinking about um, medications for mental health, it has to actually penetrate into the central nervous system. And there are a lot of barriers that need to be kind of overcome in order for a medication for mental health or for epilepsy, anything in the, the central nervous system to overcome. And that includes the blood brain barrier. Um, some products based on their properties can move very quickly through barriers. Some take some more time and some can't do it at all. So for example, if we uh, take a medication called vancomycin, it is a, a fairly powerful antibiotic. And the challenge with vancomycin is if we give it by mouth, so if we take a pill of vancomycin, it stays within our gastrointestinal system. It does not get well absorbed into our blood. And sure, if you have an infection in your gastrointestinal system that's sensitive to vancomycin, that could help. But if you have a skin infection, that's not going to work. Um, it actually needs to be given intravenously in order for it to get to the space that it needs to if it's outside of your stomach or your intestines. That's why some, you know, supplements, some products, some chemicals that might have properties, say, that are anti-inflammatory or antibacterial, et cetera, um, may not really have any human benefit because they may not be able to sustain themselves 
and reach through those barriers to get to the site of action required for that benefit to be seen. So there's a lot of nuance when it comes to determining how well drugs work and how they get to where they need to be. We also have to take into consideration the mechanism. So the mechanism of action is really looking at how the drug does the thing. So it has to, uh, we, we talk about the thing it does, where it needs to do it, and how it does it. It's the biochemical interactions that a drug engages in to produce some sort of pharmacological effect. Okay? So, uh, for example, we take a blood f or a medication for high blood pressure, like um, propranolol. It's a beta blocker. It's not the first choice usually, but it's a pretty simple mechanism of action. So beta blockers go through the bloodstream and they get to the heart organ and they block receptors called beta receptors. That's why they're called beta blockers in the heart. And when they block those beta receptors, that's the mechanism of action. The site of action is at the heart and the effect is it actually reduces the heart rate. And by reducing your heart rate, it reduces your blood pressure. So we know the effect, we know the site of action, we know the mechanism of action of beta blockers.